Well, top of my list of accomplishments this evening is making my finger really damn sore. Hello again team, it's Jess or Jashi Karin, and welcome back for another plan with me. In today's video, I'm setting up a quote page to use up one of the many empty pages that I have in this journal. A couple of weeks ago, a question was asked on one of my videos about what I was intending on doing with the last page of each section in my Neapolitan journal. My answer to this was quote pages, and as you can see, I'm setting one of those up today. So using the last page of the craft paper section that I used for October, I'm putting this quote page, which is very much taken from Aura Arts over on Instagram. This one certainly goes a little bit further than inspiration, it's very much more of a recreation. But her work is seriously amazing, there's a link to her Instagram in the description box, and I do recommend you check her out. In terms of timing, even though it was a recreation, this one came in at 1 hour and 12 minutes from first touch of the pen to final erasings, but as usual that doesn't include penciling in time. So a bit longer than that. In terms of the questions that were left on my last plan with me though, our first one comes from Pi. I think that's how you pronounce it, but I could be wildly wrong, please do let me know. But their question was, have you ever not had a theme every month? And what do you like with having themes? So when I first started bullet journaling, and probably for the first three bullet journals I had, my themes were very much just colour palettes. Really, to be honest, it wasn't even a colour palette, it was just a colour. So one month would be my orange month, one month would be my yellow month, a blue month, a green month, that kind of thing. And in terms of sticking to that theme, my first two journals, yep, didn't really stick to it at all. But in my third journal, I did very much try to keep my spreads within that colour. The thing I like about having monthly themes, though, is that I like all of the pages contained within one month to kind of be tied together and a theme lets me do that a lot easier. I also find that working on a month by month basis works a lot better for my goal setting. So having a monthly theme to kind of neatly tie that package of time is kind of helpful too. Plus I really just like the aesthetic. Our next question came from Ricky who asked, how do you decide on a theme for the month? I've been struggling with that. There are too many options. I 100% feel you on that. There are so many options for themes, and so many of them are so good, and I want to try all of them, and there's only 12 months in a year, and it makes it really challenging. I can completely understand why some people do a theme per week, or a theme per two weeks. I can also understand why people like to do an overall annual theme, like a year of Harry Potter, or a year of different places around the world. My theme decisions really come down to, one, what's been inspiring me lately, so the kind of things I've seen on Pinterest and Instagram that really sparked my interest. Two, what do I have coming up in the month and thus what's actually going to be manageable for me to do, in terms of decoration and all that. And to a much lesser extent, three, what do I think you guys might enjoy? Of course, I like to film all of my bullet journal setups, and I want it to be something you guys might actually be interested in most of the time, so I do kind of try to pick themes that would have a wider audience appeal. But as I said, this is kind of lower on my priorities list. Really, it's just what am I inspired by, what am I keen on doing, and what's going to be manageable with the time I have. Our next question came from Kathleen who asked, Are you planning on participating in Vlogmas? This year I'm not, but I will be continuing my weekly vlogs. Instead what I'm planning on doing is a 12 Days of Christmas mini-series, where for 12 of the days leading up to December 25th, I release a video of me setting up a Christmas-related layout. My intention is that the first one's coming out on December 1st my time, so something to look forward to. Anna Maria asked, how many bujos is too many bujos? Well, at one point I was using four bullet journals. That, for me, was too many bullet journals. <laughs> I feel like the answer to this question is going to be different depending on who you ask. But in general I'd say that if X number bullet journals means that you're no longer enjoying bullet journaling, or you're finding it hard to figure out where to write down certain pieces of information, or you're just not keeping up with it, Really, if it's working against the purpose that you have for your bullet journal, that's probably when you have too many bullet journals. For some people, that will be two. For some people, that will be ten. 
and any number in between or more than that of course. I think for me personally, the right number of bullet journals maximum would probably be three. At the moment I only have two and I'm quite happy with that, but I'd be open to having another one if it was filling a niche. As always, thank you to all of our inquirers from last week. If you guys have a question you want answered in next week's plan with me, please do leave them in the comments below. Alrighty team, here is the finished product. I do certainly recommend that you go and check out Aura Arts on Instagram. She is incredibly talented and her lettering is awesome. I take absolutely no credit for what I have accomplished here. <laughs> she does really amazing work. Hopefully you found today's video enjoyable though team and thank you for watching. If you wanted to see more from me, do feel free to go check out one of my other videos. And until next time, bye.